like to call this meeting to order for the work session for the Black Hawk County Board of Supervisors for January 12, 2023. Roll call, please, Mr. Beter. Hall. Here. Little. Little. He is Short. there, but here. he's frozen. Schwartz. Here. Chalka. Here. Valen. Here. Would everyone please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item one, agenda received as proposed or amended. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The agenda is received as proposed. Item two is our budget work session for today, and this will be discussion, possible board action, but consideration of all aspects of the fiscal year 24 Blackhawk County budget. Ms. Wiedner. Good morning, board. Um, we're starting out today with a few department presentations. We're just getting started. And Colleen Shipper with General Assistance is going to lead us off. You should all have um, printouts in front of you of what they're going to present. And Colleen, I think we'll hand it over to you. Alrighty. And I will put your financial stuff on the screen, hopefully. <laughs> Okay, good morning, Colleen, General Assistance. We don't have a lot of changes to report in the FY24 um, overall increase of about 1%. That includes my salary increase, and then I am asking for a 3% increase for the three agencies under Purchase Services 0834. That is for Eastside Ministerial Alliance, Jesse Cosby, and Operation Threshold. In fiscal year 23, I didn't grant them an increase just because there were so many COVID funds available. Our numbers were just way down. They've since skyrocketed because it's back to us are the main resources for the shelter. They continue to do an excellent job. Um, I think they've done about 1,200 intakes to date for this fiscal year, so it's really picked up and they continue to keep going in that, the right direction with that. The only reason that I can keep it at a 1% increase is just because in previous fiscal years we had a significant surplus and I'm trying to get that back on track budget each line item for the previous fiscal year used instead of I don't know how that got so far off. So that's why I'm able to keep it at the 1% this year. I think it's probably going to increase in the next few years. but looks good for now. I decreased some light items, increased others just to better suit each line item and what the previous years were. I'm actually really comfortable with the amounts that I am requesting in the service dollars. I think we'll be able to sustain and be able to assist everybody that applies that's eligible. Fiscal year 23 budget is right on target, and that's even with the income guideline increase. We did increase those to 100% poverty guidelines for fiscal year 23. That couldn't have come at a better time with the rent and utility costs soaring, so I think that was a really good change. I decreased the utility line item for um, 10,000. That is just because there are a lot of other programs available for utilities and we haven't been spending a lot in that line item. We do have money budgeted for substance abuse committals, and I budgeted for a 3% increase for the judicial hospital referee. For the revenues, I budgeted $1,000 less. That's just a real hard area to predict. Um, the only revenues that we really generate are through the IAR program for Social Security, and then if clients happen to reimburse us. Really, that is the only changes. I don't have anything else to report unless you guys have any questions. Is it often that the clients do reimburse? I was gonna say, I would think that'd be rare. Very, very far and few in between. Usually the only ones that do are the ones that we do substance abuse committals on. Once in a while, they do reimburse, not often, but any reimbursements are we're thankful for any of them that we receive, but not very many. Sure. The IAR reimbursements, um, that's just if somebody's found eligible for Social Security, we get reimbursed for whatever we assisted with. 
So that's real sporadic. That's really hard to predict. So I just want to thank you guys for your continued support. The amounts that we assist with sometimes don't seem like a lot, but when you see it day in and day out, it makes a huge difference in their lives. So it's just real rewarding to see that part of it. So, Have you noticed now, like as you said, that we increase that poverty level? Have you noticed that impact yet? or is Oh, that yeah. Um, our numbers right now are pre-COVID numbers. So the increase hasn't been significant just because of that. But I think now people are starting to realize, and it's just been such a positive change. People that we haven't been able to assist for years, we're finally able to assist with just a little bit, and it just really helps them get over the hump. So I have, yeah, so I'm just going to try to increase that every year to match the poverty guidelines. And I just think that's been a positive change, and I think that's a good way to do it because we hadn't increased those guidelines for years and years. So. I've had lots of phone calls thanking us for that because it just made a big difference. So, good. Well, thank you for bringing it to our attention. Because yeah, and that we yep. didn't see either. So, that's it. Great. Pauline, well, I got one question. Sure. Um, on the salary part, you said you implemented. What was the percent you put in for the agencies? For yourself. Michelle does that I, part. Yeah, I did that part. So. Amanda in Human Resources and I work together. We have tentatively put in a 3% across the board, which is the same as the bargaining units. And then there's also um, a merit program that if people are eligible for, they received some budget for that as well. Yeah, I just, that was my next question because the board usually implements a percent in each budget and then we start from there and move on. But Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I was wondering that too because of the six percent. It was like we needed some explanation on that. It was different yeah, for us this year. That was yeah. That Michelle does that part. So and the health insurance too. It was like you said, you estimated the five percent. I did estimate approximately a five percent increase in health insurance. I was really hoping <coughs> to reduce that when I saw the numbers through December because I was hoping that would even out. Um, it it doesn't doesn't appear that that will. We we do have good reserves for health insurance. However, I don't want to get us so far behind that at some point we need like a 25% increase in costs. So um, right now I'm estimating it at five. When do we find out for certain what that is? I'm trying to think of, like, I don't remember. You, okay. We really don't. I mean, our consultant is actually was recommending a higher increase that I am, I just don't think we need right now. <laughs> Those, her rates for the stop loss insurance and that kind of thing will be finalized, I think she said in March or April. But the rest of it is really based on claims, so it's how much our employees use the plan. Okay. Thank what did we have last year, Michelle, for an increase on insurance? I don't believe we had done an increase for about, for at least the last two years at all. Um, so that's why it's five, I think, this year, part of the reason for that. Um, health insurance rates costs are just rising so we're, we're starting to see that and I you know in in 2020 they really hospitals and doctors were encouraging people not to have procedures for a while in there and then I think we saw in 2022 those started getting caught up once they opened up to have those procedures again I'm hoping that's gonna calm a little bit in 2023, which is why I wanted to look at expenses and claims through December before we thought about the premium increase. But it just appears our costs are at that level right now. Do you know what our current balance is in our insurance? Um, give me one second. <laughs> I was gonna say it's about 6 million, but I'm gonna say it wrong, so I'm gonna look. Yeah, it's, it's still pretty healthy right now. It's very, it's extremely healthy. It's. Yes, I, I looked at our actuarial reports. It's well above what is required for that. So um, yeah, it, it, it really is very healthy. I just wanted to start out trying to keep it. I was trying to match current year costs with our budget. So I, that felt like the right place to start. And if we want to do something different later, we certainly can. 
Thank you. The electronic side. Not meaning to catch you off guard with a question too, but I was no, going to say you said you thought this amount was considerably higher than what is re required or what is recommended. The reserves are. No, I meant I meant that insurance. Balance. I'm talking about the insurance reserves. Yeah. When I okay. Said yes. That. Our, that because once we contribute, once we contribute to the insurance fund, we can't pull that money back out. It has to remain for those medical purposes and um, that those reserves are quite high and I don't know my page numbers yet so I'm still looking for the that's all right page did someone say something I think there's a mic on okay <laughs> that's right you can get back to us later or send us something later I, I just I'm was curious what find it here in a second so that's all right you can our get year end, it was it's 5.6 million yeah so it, it is very healthy. I would not want it to drop at this point below maybe three and a half, but there's, there's some extra there. So that gives you a little flexibility in budgeting, but we, we do have some larger things going on that I thought we, I don't, I don't want to under budget us right now. We, we want to make, we're in a good safe position and we want to stay there, I think. I just think I seem to recall there was maybe a year once where we got like a 20% increase or something kind of caught us all off guard or took us back a bit. Well, yeah, I hope that I am protecting us against that. Yes, <laughs> planning, one. planning. But <laughs> yes, so I that's why I I'm very comfortable with a 5% increase right now. And that's the other reason we do have those healthy reserves if something changes and it in March or April, whenever we find out it should have been 10%, I think we will be okay if we have to dip into those reserves for that piece of it. Yeah, Michelle, you don't have to check it now, just check later, but I'm almost pretty sure we uh, transferred money last year into the insurance fund. Um, I, there is generally 125,000 that's transferred into the- That's, what I, was, that's what I was yeah. gonna say. Rather than health, but I, yeah, I yeah. will have to look because I don't remember yeah. that there was one transferred for health. But Liability, it was, I think. It was during our insurance meeting, Tom. You and I probably were in that. I think last yeah. year with PDCM, we authorized that and brought it to the board then, the 125. That's un for, for the unfortunately, it's always after the yeah. fact. But liability, yeah. Okay. Good memory. Oh, only on some days. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing it's early in the morning. <laughs> Great. All right. Well, that else? wasn't quite all Colleen's budget that we got yeah, into, Colleen, but it helped you covered cut the a lot of ground yeah. for us. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> Super. Um, if we're ready to move on, next um, we have Dr. Bickley, the medical examiner, that's going to talk a little bit about his budget. Great. And I'm going to try to find it here. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Most, most of you know me, so. Um, Michelle and I went over the uh, uh, our contracted uh, budget. Uh, our expenses, our total accounts, and we found that we were way behind in uh, keeping up with uh, what was uh, figured. Um, the problem with our uh, uh, business is uh, everything either is contracted or it's natural with people dying more. Um, we don't have any control of those expenses, so, uh, um, you know, we're stuck. Um, Michelle, you've got the, the numbers. I do, and I've got them up on the screen, and the and you all have them in front of you. If you look at line 670, the professional services, um, I did increase that from prior year budgets by that $10,500. And I, you, as you can see, I actually did not increase that up to the amount we've spent in either fiscal 21 or 22. That account, I don't think had been the budget hadn't been changed for several years and i think we're just seeing catch up kind ca of yeah, yeah it's just catching us we we I, I do think our total people served was a few more maybe than the prior year too so that makes a difference as well um, the larger change though is in the health services which is where the autopsies and the transportation are again that that budget had not been adjusted in a couple of years and I did try to get it up to 210,000. You can see in fiscal 22 though, we spent 228. So I'm, I'm trying to move them up, trying to budget in a reasonable range, but also trying to hope a little bit that we won't use as much as we needed in fiscal 22. 
Because I believe we we do a budget amendment. We have been doing it for several years instead of just maybe me looking at it more accurately. Right. So when we when we wait and do a budget amendment at the end of the year, you're committing reserves every time to fill in that gap. I would prefer that we try to get the budget reasonably close as we can now and instead of having to dip into reserves just for our normal operating expenses every year unless we I'd rather we make a conscious decision about that I guess now rather than at the end of the year when we can't do anything about it because at that point yeah. we have we have no control we've got to pay the bills yeah Linda's correct for as long as I can remember we've had budget amendment it's because for the obvious reason you can't budget for really how many people are going to pass away. Um, so as long as I've been around, we've been doing a budget amendment every year, uh, knowing that the budget we're approving probably won't get it done. So I think it's going to always be a hard target to hit. Another thing and is, obviously, uh, another and obviously thing. when you're sitting with the reserves we got, I don't think it's going to hurt anything. No, that's, this is also true, but it accurately reflects. It, it does, and I, to what you know, our, so our state law budget requirement is that we can't exceed the budget in any of the program categories. By doing it a little earlier in the year, we can hopefully help avoid some of that issue, too, if we set our budget. We'll still have to do amendments. You always have to. Mm -hmm. um, a budget is a plan. Life gets in the way of that later. Mm -hmm. But we're, we just want to try to be in a reasonable position. Well, we've had some increases that we have, no, as I mentioned, no control over. The state has charged us more for every autopsy. It went from like 1,500 to two to 3,000 yep. each case. Um, our numbers of deaths have gone up a little bit, as, as Michelle mentioned. Um, and the state basically made a ruling that we had to pay for whatever the uh, uh, funeral homes wanted to charge us for transport of bodies from Ankeny to Waterloo. And we have to pay it it's now a law so yeah and i wanted to uh, i had questions in regard to that i mean we had talked about purchasing a vehicle okay and it sounds yeah. like you could easily find personnel with well the, there's a problem with that uh, when michelle and i went over the numbers again um it really didn't pan out as being a real big savings gotcha. so we just are going to drop that uh whole issue and and stick with what we're doing gotcha. and when i calculated that i was trying to amortize the cost of the vehicle and also the equipment you need to use and it really made it a break-even proposal we just we don't have enough cases being handled every year to make that pay unless if some other cost rises that isn't today then we will need to revisit it and initially we had uh, thought that uh, we were going to be able to purchase a vehicle uh, through a, a um, Grant. COVID yes. grant, a COVID grant, so it wouldn't have cost us anything. But now, since we're going to found that it wasn't the case, uh, we would have had to pay for it, and that's where the the change came in. It it wasn't going to work. Well, and I think when we initially started last year too, we t we threw in probably twenty five thousand dollars. We thought for a vehicle, vehicle costs went up, but yeah. you looked at it I think more closely and saw that we, there was equipment that was needed. It wasn't just the vehicle. It's, it's just not going to work. And it all started being like about a hundred thousand dollar. Oh yeah, yeah. vehicle. So yeah, and so I have. I if anyone that. wants to see the calculations, I have them. So I and I assume the counties that ring us, uh, like Grundy, Bramer, uh, they rely on the funeral homes as well. Yes, yes. And we haven't seen an increase in the funeral home charges. They've been conservative they've been for holding that. They've been working they've been with us, out. so that's not like normally uh, we would pay two hundred dollars uh, per case for transport from Ankeny to us. Um, or to back here. Um, now there can be anywhere from two to five hundred dollars each case, you know. And, and as I say, we're stuck in stuck paying for it. Right. Um, the uh, charge for going down has not changed at least for the last five years. It's uh, four sixteen uh, through uh, Mercy One uh, ambulance service, and that has not changed. About how many autopsies? Did we have to do last year? Okay, we did 60 last year, but the years before we were doing like 120, 130. So for whatever reason, we had less last year. So and if those funeral home costs were to go up, it might be something that we'd look at a vehicle of our own at some point. We could point. consider it in the future, but right now it's just not feasible. No. Okay, appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming today too. Good to see you.
All right, next we are going to move on to Veterans Affairs. Well, good morning, board, and Jolanda Lovelace, uh, Director of Blackhawk County Veterans Affairs. Also invited uh, one of our commissioners, Mike Butler. Um, he's a commissioner on our, um, that uh, I really need. Uh, I'm a war fighter. He's a banker, uh, so he helps us uh, with a little continuity, but he also helps us uh, make sure that we are um, doing things right, fluent, and uh, transparent. And that's the biggest thing. And if you notice that uh, when I do brief you guys, I, I brief transparency. And, and a lot of that is based off of um, sound advice from Linda Leyland and uh, a few of you others. Uh, Tom is another one who uh, kind of encourages me to make sure that we are being as transparent as possible with our monthly budget. Um, so starting off with our budget, um, and then I'll bring our banker up. You can see that our veteran grant, um, we're concerned about the veteran grant. Um, just recently, um, the governor suspended the Iowa Trust Fund. Uh, we normally would, would utilize about $60,000 out of the Iowa Trust Fund to help veterans with repairs of their, urgent repairs of their homes, their vehicles, and things of that nature. They suspended that. and then. Now the $10,000 state allotment is another one that might be looked upon. Um, and so we're concerned about that. We are going to the Veterans um, Day on the Hill next week um, to um, just display our concerns um, that uh, hopefully our congressional staff here in Iowa will continue to some of those programs that have made us successful in the standpoint. The other thing with the donation line, um, we, we based that at about $15,000 a year. Uh, just the last two months, I was just telling um, the other department heads, we took in $13,000 just in November and de December alone in cash donations. Um, but we don't know how inflation is going to affect going into a fiscal year 24 um, in that standpoint. Uh, under, that was under the revenue. But then under salaries and benefits, again, that is not under my control, but I'm glad that um, some of our staff is getting some pay increases uh, to include health and uh, life insurance in that standpoint. Getting into our operating expenses, pretty much what we did, we, did, we uh, utilized again the, the theory of zero-sum gain, um, and all five commissioners were on board as we went through each line item um, to talk about you know, what we're going to need going into 2024 with inflation in mind. Um, but not X into X for any kind of increases, because basically we've been doing pretty good with uh, our budgets as we go within the first two quarters. Um, as you can see, it's pretty much mirroring our 23 amended budget um, in that standpoint. And we looked at that uh, based off of, again, um, where we're at the first six months of this year, um, perceiving what we may be at within what's going to close us out down with the next two quarters and then going into 2024, what it looks like. And so we, we kept it pretty much stagnant, as you can see. Um, we didn't change anything. We knew that there's possibility that, like, uh, funeral expenses may go up, um, grave and cemetery stuff may go up, the price of those t particular items. Um, advertising may go up, but we want to keep advertising in our budget because that's how we make veterans aware of the services that we can provide. Um, with the PACT Act, uh, that's out there now, which is going to allow more foot traffic into our office. We really do benefit from the advertisement, also the word of mouth. But we kept pretty much everything as is in that standpoint. Um, and then um, you see we're just pretty much stagnant. We didn't ask for any increases in uh, anything. We just like to keep it the same. And uh, I just really want to take an opportunity to thank the board. This is my going on my fourth year. Um, going into my fourth year, and uh, our office could not be successful without the commitment from Mr. Commissioner Trucka, Linda Leyland, now Tavis, Chris, and Tom. And uh, we, we really do uh, appreciate the support that you guys have given the veterans in, a, in our office that we can do what we can for our veterans um, in that standpoint. Um, it's, a, it's an honor to be in this position. Um, but it's also an honor to, to help a veteran that is in need. Um, but Mike, did you want to say anything as the, the banker of uh, our commissioner? Yolanda, before you stepped away, I was just going to ask, you have the contract carriers, which was just a minimal increase, but I was going to say, is that the people that are providing um, driving services? 
No, okay. so our, our driving services is actually volunteer. Just so, volunteer only. Okay, because yes. I thought that might be difficult. Okay. No problem finding volunteers to do that. Thank you. I am Mike Butler. I'm an old vet, particularly compared to Yolando. Um, it's been interesting. This is my third year, maybe, uh, as a commissioner. Um, we have a very good office, a good staff that really looks after veterans. Uh, my biggest concern coming into this was reading the other day, the other week or month, that the Iowa Trust is busted. Um, Yolando does a great job of pulling money out of that trust fund to use, and, and that takes the pressure off the county and some other volunteer money donations that we get. So that may come back to bother us. That and the $10,000 that um, for some counties they try to take, and he's been proud to say, Blackhawk County, we've always understood that 10000 isn't flow through the county and they give it to us. It's money for us to use for incidentals. Um, we do a lot with um, donations, and that will carry us, but without that 50 or so thousand dollars that he's been drawing down from the Iowa Trust, we may have to come back. On the other hand, um, he doesn't believe we need to. And if we need to, it'll come late and it'll be after everything else we've done. My, my sidebar, other than again to applaud uh, Yolando and, and Stacy and uh, Michelle and Mary, is last year we, we were hoping and we're hoping this year um, that you might allocate some money for a patio behind our facility. Last year we had, and we are big, really big on, it's not the veteran, it's the veteran and the family. And, and we've increased some things or intend to for uh, widowed spouses so that we take care of them after the vet's gone. And, and often, whether it's veterans or not, that's what happens in life. One spouse dies and the other one loses so much, particularly contact, and, and we don't want that to happen. But last summer, um, we had somebody in a, in a uh, wheelchair, and, and the staff does a really nice thing with volunteers of providing a, a Thursday picnic lunch. And we have nursing homes bringing folks in, veterans show up with their spouses. But uh, this gal was in a motorized wheelchair, and it went off the edge. Uh, we, we have some soft material out there to try to catch it. We really need um, that patio. Uh, it'd be nice if it had a shade above it and all that, but if we got the concrete down, if nothing else, I'll go out and raise money <coughs> for the rest. I, it's, I, would, I would ask uh, that Yolando and the VA, you know, send us over uh, a proposal for a, a patio with an awning. Um, I'd even mentioned to you at one point, I, I thought it should incorporate an outdoor kitchen. Um, something like this would be a good use of, of, a, little, of a little bit of reserve money. So I, I say send us a, a proposal and let's put it in the budget this year. We can at least consider it, you bet. Mm -hmm. if, if, yeah, we'll works. work on that. <laughs> I will or he will, one of us will work on okay. that. But otherwise, <laughs> thank you. We do appreciate Blackhawk County. Um, we are, I, I see the national numbers, $2.7 million a month flows into our county uh, to take care of veterans. And we, we don't manage that, but we try to help those veterans also. That Some of them don't need our help, and some of them make too much money, but, but the ones that really need us, we want to be there. And I think all the Thursday picnics now are held at the VA office, are they not? not yes. I mean, for the most part. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good morning, board. I just wanted to make a comment with regards to the patio. Um, you'll notice once I uh, uh, do my budget, uh, I do have a patio uh, on there for the VA along with the sidewalk that uh, goes from the, the back to the uh, front parking lot. So. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, hey, Linda? Yes. I have a question for Rory. I didn't know if he was there. Yes. Um, I notice our budgets are starting coming in like the VA pretty soon will have the health and then the engineer. Is our uh, utilities going to reflect the solar that we put in our buildings? Are they going to be reflected on our budget this year? Uh, yeah, they are actually, we started uh, incorporating that uh, reduction last, last year's budget and it will be on this year's uh, again as well. 
Um, I don't have those numbers uh, actually in front of me, but I will uh, go through that uh, once I'm presenting my budget. So it reflects here in the uh, VA. Are they under that? They're under solar, too, yeah, aren't they? Yes. Uh, anybody that's housed in the uh, uh, Pinecrest facility uh, gets to have the benefit of that. So, And then it'll also be our other outbuildings, engineering workshops, and so forth. Is yep. that correct? Absolutely. Yeah, we have uh, seven locations altogether. But you're saying we're going to see that reflection in this year's budget, of the reduced utilities? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, it'll, uh, Thank you. What you'll, what you'll see is uh, last year we started uh, uh, showing that uh, reduction. Um, it'll be a continuance of that on, on this year's budget. Did you ever report at the next board meeting on how that's working, our utilities, the cost? Um, reflection that we're uh, receiving at the current time I think this is what the second year yeah um, just to, what I can share with you uh, is our electrical for that facility what we're paying uh, for the electrical portion is only the uh, fee for mid-american to provide electrical uh, which equates to approximately ten dollars a month um, for that facility and so how how it works with our department uh, is we we take the uh, utility cost and then we break that up and uh, uh, charge that back to the uh, the uh, entities in that facility based on the space that they're using. Uh, so, for an example, uh, DHS uh, they they comprise about 54 percent of that building. Uh, so we take all of our expenses and we just we sep we, we uh, break that out um, based on the space that they're using. Are we selling any electricity back? Um, we can't sell it back. What we do is it's it's like a bank, and so any excess electricity that the solar arrays produce goes into a bank that uh, uh, then we draw off of in times when uh, the the arrays are not producing uh, in the winter time, uh, cloudy days, so forth. And so uh, that bank gets uh, reconciled every April, um, and then uh, we will get issued a credit. Uh, uh, at, in April, and then we start that process over again. Okay, thank you. Yep. You had me worried, Rory. I didn't have your budget stuff with me today. Yeah, thank you for doing it's Okay, that. make yeah. me sweat. <laughs> well, knowing it's in there already, that's your help, so I can say in a lot of ways. So. <laughs> Great. All right, I think we're ready to move on to the auditor's office. Good morning, board. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Well, uh, the auditor's budget is very much like it's been in past years. Uh, you can see that there's a slight reduction in revenues, which are minuscule to start with. So, uh, it, unless you have any questions there, it doesn't uh, require much attention. Um, salaries and benefits are what uh, Michelle put in. And then in operating expenses, there's some um, minor changes there where uh, uh, Tim Jamison, who combed through to look at expenses compared to budget in past years, made some small adjustments. Uh, the more significant adjustments um, are in the area of um, minor uh, office furniture, minor equipment, and uh, miscellaneous repair materials and labor. And this is uh, a couple of things. Under the uh, minor equipment, um, we're requesting three new scanners. Uh, we have three small scanners uh, right now, um, and these are used um, on a pretty much daily basis by uh, people in the uh, financial part of our office. Uh, so we have six people using them. We have three of them presently, and we'd like to get three more so that each of those people <coughs> have one on their desk, and that's a, an expense of $2,200. Uh, the other two expenses uh, for minor office equipment and miscellaneous repair materials and labor, that's uh, splitting up the project for the plat room, which you will recall has been on the budget for a couple of years. So this shows a cost increase, but actually those funds were never expended in the first place. And I'm trying to remember, uh, Rory, was that money originally in your budget? Uh, do you have anything in your budget for it this year? 
<laughs> oh, I was, was going to say we could just strike that out if so. Rory put it in his <laughs> budget. Sorry. Um, but you, uh, alternatively, you can just shift it to his budget. So. Um, <laughs> that was the 8,500. <laughs> yeah, that's 8,500 and, and the 8,000 on line five five. <coughs> yes, both. Okay. So, um, any questions? Thank you. Thank you. No. Anything else to add about that one, Michelle? No. Not unless Rory wants to. <laughs> <laughs> no. Some can of worms on that. All right. If there's no questions for that, I do have. Got to find the right file here. I did put together a couple slides about some other topics too that we could talk about this morning. Um, the first one will be our debt outstanding. Um, the county is in a really fortunate position, I would say, with our geo debt. And you, you should have those sheets in front of you. I think. Mm -hmm. um, so at the end of, and I'm at fiscal 22, so the year we just finished and received the audit. Our total outstanding bonds was six, just under 16.7 million. But of that, um, six million of that is repaid with Solid Waste Commission fees. Another 2.5 million is from the E911 board relating to their software project. And then 8.1 million of that outstanding debt was for county roads and bridges that we need to pay for. And we use local option tax and property tax to repay those. Um, so you can see projected at the end of June of 23, that debt will fall to 11.4 million, 4.4 um, for solid waste, 2.2 for E911, and down to 4.6 million for county roads and bridges. And then projecting that for the budget year we're going into with 24, the county roads and bridges balance will fall to 2.9 million and our debt service requirement will also fall substantially in 2024, 1.8 million um, based on current debt outstanding. So we are in a, a really healthy place, I think right now with our debt. And you can see the county's share will be fully paid off in June of 2027. That's assuming we don't do any more bond issuances. Um, and solid waste 2030 and E911 2031. Solid waste does have um, one issue maturing that will fall off the schedule and reduce their repayment requirements starting in 2025, I think. They are um, looking at options for construction on another project, so they may want to fill that in. At, at, they've had that discussion with you, but at what year were they th you thinking that would be? I'm not sure that they will be approaching you in the next few weeks to talk about their plans. So we'll find maybe out. This, we'll find out this, maybe this year, Linda, they're talking anywhere from 3.7 to $6 million on a new uh, development out there. Okay. Uh, so yes. they're not really sure. Uh, we don't know which way we want to go. We might pay off one bond and then rebond again. Um, we just have to get that dollar amount more uh, concrete rather than this big spread right now. Okay. And that was for a new cell, right, Tom? Yeah, that's another cell. And uh, John Foster will come to the Board of Supervisors. Uh, I would imagine it'll probably be sometime later this year. Okay. Thank you. Then it's up to, it's up to the Board. But hmm. the biggest problem within bonds now that we're realizing over there is um, a lot of our bonds were very good interest rates. Um, I think they're up to 6% now. Is that correct, Michelle? Particularly revenue bonds. I would hope GOs are more in the four to five, but they could be headed towards six unless the Fed stops raising rates. <laughs> so. You know, for a long time, we realized uh, below percent. So yeah. uh, those days are over. Yeah. Yes, and that's bad news when we're borrowing money. There, there will be a little good news related to that on investment earnings when we get to another budget, but we'll save that for another day. <laughs> yes. Any other questions about our current debt position? No, oh, thank you. Thank you. It's always good to review. Then I also just kind of 
put together a little summary of our general fund fund balance because I've had some questions about how much it is. Uh, and this one, it, the dates probably look funny because I start with the balance at June of 21, but that's because we really only know our balance as of June of 22 right now. So I, I walked through how we got there from June of 21. And there are several types of fund balance that are restricted in how we use it. And the, the first one is called non-spendable items. That's prepaid things. It means we've already paid out the money for it. And in this case, it's for inventory. So we already bought the inventory. We've got the items um, sitting somewhere to be used. So that's that 237,000. Then we have the supplemental purposes. That's gonna be primarily employee benefits, but there's some other things that could be in there too. We did have an increase of half a million dollars in that. So that rose to 5.1 million at June of 2022. Then we- and why would that be? I'm just curious to ask. I am not sure I can oh. answer that today. Okay. <laughs> well, okay. We can, All right. Um, I will put more, effort into figuring that out because I want to understand how those things are happening for now this is the these are the numbers and these are the numbers and, later. yes and okay. one of the things that we realized as we were wrapping up the audit this year is we have certain types of funds that the board has acknowledged are designated or the technical word is assigned for specific purposes so we did go ahead and record those as a signed fund balance this year, and that's about 1.6 million. And those, those would be things such as the balance in the Sheriff 6040 fund, for example, because we can't just take that and use it for something else. Um, also, funds that are donated, um, you heard Yolando talking about receiving donations. If he has donations received at the end of June that he hasn't spent yet, that would fall into that category. So we, you, so th that's really funds we can't use as well. And those continue to carry over for years? I mean, Yes, which is why I need to put them one. in that assigned, when we put them in that assigned category, that means they stay there until we use them for their intended purpose. So that could be a long time or tomorrow, <laughs> it just depends. Yeah. So the subtotal of those, of all those restricted types of fund balance is the 6.9 million, if you see that on row about four there. And then that leaves us with the balance that we typically talk about, which is technically called unassigned, but that's the fund balance that is there to be our safety net if there are emergencies or that we can choose to use however we like. And when you hear GFOA, um, that's the Government Finance Officers Association, or other entities talk about fund balance and that you should have at least 25%, that's the number they're referring to. So ours is much higher than that. We're at about 75% right now. Um, I would not recommend dropping to 25, but we certainly have very healthy reserves and we may want to you choose how to use those strategically. And one, one thing I would say about governments in general, I think you're all probably more familiar with county bonding requirements than I am at this point, but generally if you want to invest very much in a building, and I forgot to look up your limit today, um, you would have to go to a vote of the public if you were going to issue debt for it. But that unassigned fund balance does not carry that requirement, I don't believe. So that's just something kind of to keep in the back of your minds. Any limit you, you would seek to uh, finance? That I would want to keep or? No, uh, I guess my question is you'd have to take it to a vote. Let's say, is there a threshold? That, I need to look that up. I It, it might be a million dollars for counties. I've still got the city number in my head and I think it's wrong. So I don't, um, I will get back to you on that. I, I ran out of time to figure that out for you today. Meaning there'd be a minimum, but anything more than that would require? If you wanted to borrow money. Generally, if you want to borrow money for a do, certain purpose, you would have to do that. Some essential county purpose. It, right, exactly. Unless for what essential county purposes. Yes, and I mean, there's lots of rules around that, yeah, but that yeah. I just want to put that idea out there that there are certain things you could use this money for that you might not want to borrow money to do, I guess. Let me let me put it that way. That, that was my only purpose in even raising that. I don't know if we've ever done a referendum. Uh, the only time I can recall a referendum 
uh, was to use local option sales ta tax to pay for some of the road use. Correct. Yep. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I don't ever recall a referendum. No. But with that said, a lot of this information yeah, has got to be quite refreshing for you. The jail, I guess. Okay. 1990. Yeah. 90? So it's been a couple days. <laughs> the jail. <laughs> yeah, really. And that's okay. <laughs> it's good not to have a lot of debt. It gives it gives the board a lot more flexibility, so it's a good thing. Well, and I think for a long time we kind of focused on that 25%. That, that I mean, and we weren't at that for a lot of years, too. Right. So once we did, I think we thought that was healthy, but I think then later it was really, okay, that's the minimum. Yeah. I would suggest that's definitely the minimum, and yeah. I would, so you do want to say that. Yeah, 75 is a little too high. Yeah, for sure, but it's, a safety net is really what it's designed Correct. for or what it's supposed yep. to provide the yeah the 75 percent is higher than it needs to be i i totally agree with that and we want to address that but i think we want to do it very strategically and make sure we are not hurting ourselves in if future it, years but, if yeah. you're thinking about bonding and you're going out for a new bond rating you don't want to be lowering your reserves at that time this is true. <laughs> you know, the, the old adage, if you have money, you can borrow money. So, and, and it's cheaper then. You're, you'll get a better bond rating and cheaper interest. And that is becoming a more important factor again, because rates are, I mean, they've dramatically risen in the last 12 months for borrowing, yeah. as we all know. Yes. Getting to be expensive. That will be something probably that comes up even, I suppose, in another part of this budget discussion as we it will. I'm just kind of see setting the table at. with you today to, sh to mm -hmm. let you see what's out there, and we'll we'll be visiting more about some of those things later. Okay. I think that is all I have today, unless there's anything else the supervisors want to review or discuss. I don't know if anyone does, and I'm not sure where Mr. Trinan uh, is this morning. He was on Zoom. I'm, right. okay. I'm here. <laughs> okay, great. Well, that's what one of the one of the things I was just going to mention that it was just in regard to scheduling because I think as we schedule these meetings for Tuesdays and Thursdays, um, after the last week's meeting, you know, we were talking about not only the work session for EMA levy, but I think just our meetings for budget discussions. And um, Tavis brought up the point that he's at the new officers school next week on just Thursday, is it? Wednesday and Thursday, but yeah. Wednesday, I'm at but for no, yeah. budget discussion. And um, also, like I say, the fact that a work session, if we had that next Thursday, and if that would be better to be in person, obviously, I thought if we especially included like EMA and consolidated communications boards with ours. But um, the time element I thought even was going to be difficult to do for our staff to provide that information. But the fact that we'd need people to be in person and to allow our, the other cities, quite honestly, the opportunity to put it on their calendars and schedule for that. And so um, next week or the next couple weeks um, probably even seemed like it was um, pretty fast. But that brought us to some questions and comments then because we were talking about the city's budgets and them preparing their budgets and where they were at in the process. And because it sounded like on Tuesday that there was a consensus, maybe unanimous, but consensus that um, we didn't want to do this levy for the counties from the county standpoint in for fiscal year 24. And I that was a obviously needs to be a board decision if that's in fact true. There was discussion on that, but if that's true. But our consideration was going out to notify the cities. And I meant to get with Tim before um, day and yesterday just to say, have the cities been contacting him, you know, with their budget processes because they talk with him so much. And I'm wondering what the county was doing. So um, Mr. Trinan had been thinking about uh, a motion or something for this board. And I didn't know, thank you, Mike, for being on board, but I was going to say to talk to it. Um, I know you mentioned having something in the works that we thought just took board approval to say that this is a board decision, not just something we'd like to do. Mm -hmm. So if that makes sense to everyone, do you want to speak to it, Mike? I was going to say, when you get to the point, if you're talking about a motion or a resolution, I have hard copies here I was going to provide just because it was a little larger than sometimes you want to sit and think about. <laughs> so, unless you've changed. You bet. It. You bet. So uh, I, I was, after, uh, after Tuesday's meeting, uh, being aware of uh, the the 
what seemed like the position of the board. Um, I uh, had already had, and, and frankly, before the meeting, because I knew this was uh, was likely to come up, um, I think that what we need to do is we need to communicate uh, to the other uh, involved entities or municipalities involved in the EMA what the position of the board is, if the board is ready to state that position relative to fiscal 24. Uh, the reason being that uh, there's some concern that these entities may not uh, may not uh, otherwise budget for it if they think that we are going to be uh, funding at this point through a levy. Uh, so the in the uh, what I believe Linda has in front of her reads as follows: uh, motion to communicate to Blackhawk County Cities that the Board of Supervisors has requested a legal analysis of the required actions to implement an emergency management agency levy, that the Board of Supervisors has identified a number of additional questions and concerns that require clarification before consolidated communication should be absorbed into the County Emergency Management Agency, and that it is the position of the Board of Supervisors that Blackhawk County cities should budget to continue funding consolidated communication for fiscal year 2024 to allow adequate time to complete such analysis and address unanswered questions and concerns prior to the County Emergency Management Agency absorbing consolidated communication. So that's that was the uh, that was the motion uh, that I had I had prepared that I think covers all of the bases that are in play here, namely the fact that uh, we're still checking into certain analysis of, the, of a proposed levy. Uh, we're looking at some of the logistics of absorbing consolidated communication into the EMA, and until those are are answered, we're not uh, really prepared. Uh, to go forward with that. At least that was my understanding uh, from Tuesday's meeting and from certain other conversations I've had. Any questions? No, I thank you, Mike. I think that was what, like I said, we thought Tuesday's uh, discussion was, but I thought things could change. People's minds change. People have different opinions and wanted to make sure that this was something if we wanted to go forward on, because I do feel like for us to send something out from our office that they should consider this or this is where the board is at is only fair to them as well as we certainly don't want to be to um, a fiscal year 24 and not have funding for consolidated communications. That would be a terrible place to be. So um, it's open for discussion if there's any comments. And I'm, I apologize, Tom and Chris, that uh, you aren't able to see this until or hear it now is all. But. No, I, I think it's an unfair assumption. Um, Mike said he needed some time at Tuesday's meeting and uh, really that was kind of thrown on us pretty quick. Um, so this time there'll be a, a, a good amount of period of time that we can sit there and hold some uh, joint meetings or so forth and um, go from there. So I, I think it'd be appropriate to uh, pass that motion. I, uh, I guess my only comment is, uh, I, it's a resolution I won't support. It's well worded, I have questions, but I feel sometimes as a board, we sit on our hands for too long and we lack initiative. So that's why I, I will vote against the resolution. The only defense I'd say on that, Dan, was they passed a lot of stuff already, assuming. I mean, we as a board have had no action or anything. They just assumed that we were gonna do this and they pretty much demanded it, really, if you stop and think about it. so. You know, I don't know where we put this back on our shoulders. I would think they would go ahead and fund it unless there was some action taken. And there's been no action taken. As far as I'm concerned, we were gonna uh, budget our own um, services this year. Um, so I don't even know why we have to do it all when we didn't start anything. I mean, it's up to the EMA committee to go forward. So I, I think listening to the county attorney, I think it makes sense to wait on this. Any other comments or, and you don't have to, what I was just yeah. saying. I mean, look, I, I think, I think to Dan's point, um, 
sometimes there, there does need to be action. Um, and, 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 but I do think this is different than just, frankly, general hand wringing. Um, there's, there are, as I stated on Tuesday, there's, there's too many questions um, to, to move forward and, and potentially lock us up um, and tie us to a levy that, that the majority of the board doesn't, um, again, it just has too many questions and, and is too uncertain of. I think it's, I think it represents, passing this resolution represents the approach that we should take um, with this issue. We don't have to pass this. It, it, it is ultimately the city's responsibilities to budget until there's another mechanism. I think by us stating, hey, we're not going to take this issue up right now, um, that we want another, we, we want some time to fully study. If that means, that we, Dan, to your point, if we create a task force um, and, and really have multiple, uh, have a couple of, of board members um, really you know, do the homework on this and engage, that would make sense. Um, I think this is this demonstrates us being a good partner, um, even if it's not at the time frame that that the other entities uh, within uh, EMA want. It does demonstrate that we're we're, we're willing to work, um, and again, we don't have we're, we're not required to tell them that we're not going to take this up. Um, I think this is this is a show of good faith. Well, and I'm glad you brought that up. It brought me to a question. Yesterday, I was contacted by one of the small town mayors mm -hmm. and um, was mentioning that he called for something completely different, not this. And I said it was timely. I wanted to share with him our comments or my comments and everyone's discussion that was on Tuesday. And um, I said, I was curious about them preparing their budget and what they were doing. And he said they put in their budgets, he said, until uh, other advised notified but I said I appreciated that but he did think there were other communities that wouldn't do that or weren't doing that that maybe would just assume this levy was going to go through and so we're already doing it but he did say and without me even asking he did say I did think when we took action on this it was a little rushed at the EMA meeting and for me that was kind of like you know I guess confirmation that I just think more time everybody feels better about it so thank you Chris did you have an opinion or thoughts on it you'd like to yeah, no, it's just, um, it's, it's something that we've had not very much information on, and there's a lot of um, legal questions still out there. So it's, it's hard to imagine how this could be um, in, in place, like for, for this fiscal year, um, when we're doing the budget right now. It's kind of, it's kind of building the plane as we're flying, it seems like. Thank you. Are you looking for a motion today, Linda? Yeah, and I was going to mention to Mike, because he doesn't have the hard copy in front of him, but I thought resolution was probably better than motion, just so we can be on record for. But I mean, you're looking for approval of a yes. resolution. Yes, one or a motion vote. for it. Yes, please. OK, I'll make that motion then to uh, approve the resolution. Thank you. Is there a second? Oh, second. Okay, any more discussion, comments? Okay, please answer as your name is called. Hall? Yes. Little? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. Joka? No. Leyland? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Trinan. Also, glad we had something you, to look at. Somewhere. You bet, <laughs> and I will go ahead and email uh, the the exact resolution language with the change in uh, this from a motion to a resolution. I will email that out to the board and to uh, Mr. Beter uh, more or less right now. Okay, great. Thank you. And I don't know if there's anything else to come before the board. I was just going to say when we were talking a little bit about schedules, we don't have to talk about it here, but if anyone has any commitments in January, February, or March for us to work around for budgeting, to at least let Michelle know so we can kind of go forward on that and have as well particip participation as we can. Right, yes, I would appreciate that because we will try to work around those things. Yeah. Let's resume is nice. Yeah. Yes, knowing you have Zoom, is av it's available, you bet. All right, thank you. 
Well, is there a motion for adjournment? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Meetings adjourned. And thank you, everyone. Thank you.